that it's um, in nice and securely. Connect your thermocouple. So watch what happens here. We're gonna connect this. This essentially reads the ambient room temperature. Twenty eight in here. That's the temperature of the probe at the moment. Reduce the time to about twenty seconds. Yeah. But normally it would default at 120 seconds and leave it at 120 seconds because that's the time that you require. And what will happen is once you start ablating, you'll see that this temperature here will drop, will drop significantly to about minus 65, minus 70 degrees Celsius. You only need up to minus 40 to cause cell damage. When the surgeon is ready to ablate, the temperature will start going down. Once it reaches minus 40, it starts timing. So it's not timing at all now because we're not at the temperature you require to kill cells. You can see that it's starting to freeze. So you see it's starting to time and the temperature should increase to about minus 65. And defrost it pretty quickly. And now it vents itself and it's back on standby ready for the next ablation. Is press this twice. And you put it into another defrost cycle. It will defrost again for a second time. It can remove it and then it will go back into standby mode and the machine will vent itself again. It doesn't happen quickly because it gives it, it gives it time to defrost and time for you to pull it out, but it will. And if it does take a long time, you can just press it one more time and it'll go into standby mode. But let's, it's back in standby mode and it's vented and it's vented out through this, through this. The surgeon says, I'm done, everything can go. One important thing that you have to do, you must do, and this is quite important, is to vent the machine. And the way you vent the machine, first thing you're going to do is turn the gas off. If you don't turn the gas off and you start venting the machine, all you're going to do is empty this bottle. Okay? So just make sure that this is closed nice and tight. And there's two ways of venting. There's a little button there and there's a little knob here, both in red. The easiest way to do it is to just use the button and just press it and you'll see the pressure on the pressure gauge dropping. You'll go all the way down to zero. And in order for you to use this specific uh, button here, you need to have elect electricity still supplied to this, uh, to the ice box. Okay, so once you've got your pressure of zero, you can let go. If you have some residue left over, you can just use this red knob. It's a bit hard to pull, but you can pull it and it'll empty it completely for you. Just for the purposes of completeness, you asked about whether you can remove this after venting, so I'm going to remove it now. To remove this, remember when we when we okay, connect when we connected it, we just pushed one, and the, the second one you push the coupling back and you pushed it in. So for, for, for removal, you've got to push the coupling back for both of them. So just that, just that, just that. That's done. First thing you're going to do is turn the gas off because the machine. Let's say for example you're doing it in theatre, surgeon says not working. You have a quick look at the pressure. The pressure is below 800, you want to change the gas bottle. So the gas bottle at that point will be opened, right? So just turn the gas bottle off, get your spanner, which is here, and undo it. It's a bit awkward because of the design of it, but there's some residual gas because this is now shut off, so not to worry. Just take this off. Once the coupling is off, and take the warming blanket off. Once the warming blanket's off, chain off, take it away, put the new one back on, the reverse cycle. To put the warming blanket on, the best thing to do is to put the top one on first. Um, so when you're putting the warming blanket on, guys, just put the warming, there's two things to remember. First thing, the warming blanket mustn't be flush at the base. Okay, because there's a thick wad of metal on the base. You don't want to warm the base. You actually want to warm the cylinder. So make sure that the warming blanket is about two inches or so above, above the base. Um, just connect the warming blanket, top one, bottom one, and then do all the ones in the middle. Otherwise, if you do the top one and try to do them in sequence, it'll be flapping all over the place. Once that's done, you can connect your coupling back on. Now, strictly speaking, they say this can be hand tightened, but to be honest with you, all the ones I've tried to do to hand tighten they leak. There's a there's a little washer. So this this washer here. So if this washer isn't there, that's when it normally leaks. 
So when you're changing it, just be careful because sometimes it can just fall out. Obviously when you are uh, threading this, this happened before, try not to cross thread it. So I'm going to try hand tightening this today just to see if it works. Just to check the pressure again, I'm going to open it so you can open. Just listen for leaks because I'm hand tightened. Okay, so it is leaking. Can you hear that? Yeah. So I'm going to tighten it. Okay. This leak is now stopped. So I'm going to open again. No more leaks. Pressure is 800. So sometimes what happens is if the pressure is below 800, give it about 10 minutes because this warming blanket will heat up and actually warms the gas and that increases the pressure in the cylinder. So if you don't have a pressure of 800, just give it 10 minutes or so. And even after the warming blanket coming on, it'll come on automatically and it'll go off automatically. Even after the, the, the warming blanket coming on and 10 or 15 minutes has passed, you don't have a pressure of 800. It means you definitely need to change the bottle. So in this case, you can see there's a good pressure in here because even before this is warmed up, you've already got a pressure of 800. Do after you've opened it, is at the front here, there's a reset button. Let's have a look at this here, please, guys. You, I'm not going to, I'm not going to reset this because that's not a full gas bottle. Mm -hmm. But when you change it to a new one, just press the reset button. So this is essentially a gauge. It's a very unreliable gauge of how much of gas there is in the gas bottle. So we generally say don't use this as your marker. Use the uh, the pressure gauge at the back as your marker. However, if the gas goes low, then it's accurate in that it's telling you the gas is low. And if you, if you, the one thing you may notice at the front is you might notice that the handle, the color of the handle, which is green now, if it's orange, it signifies that the gas bottle hasn't been opened. Yeah, that's showing orange now. Did you just switch it on again? Orange, which tells you that the closed and now once you've opened it it's turned to green you can have a look.